fortunately, what we've seen is the reintroduction of Vetselin. Uh, Vetselin was the InterVet sharing plow product, which was the porcine-derived insulin uh, available for use both in dogs and cats. Now you know, it's back on the market. Uh, Vetselin now is being marketed by Merck. And the advantages of Vetselin, especially it being a porcine-derived insulin, is that the amino acid sequence of canine insulin and porcine insulin are identical. Therefore, the, the probability or the chance that you would have an adverse reaction uh, due to anti-insulin antibodies is uh, essentially removed. The other nice thing about the uh, Vetselin uh, insulin is that it's a lenti insulin. And what we know about lenti insulins as a class is that they really have uh, two modes of action. There's a rapid onset of action that helps with postprandial hyperglycemia. And then there's a delayed reaction which helps control hyperglycemia between meals. And that's really the, uh, probably the biggest advantage of the lentis is that we know in blocking postprandial hyperglycemia, we can help prevent a lot of the complications of diabetes, the signs that the owners see, such as the polyuria and the polydipsia, and then the long-term complications of diabetes that we're going to be monitoring. Some things to remember, though, about Vetsilin is that it is available only as a U40 insulin. Therefore, we have to make sure that we dispense U40 insulin syringes, and any time an owner needs new syringes, that they're always getting a U40 syringe. And one of the changes that veterinarians will probably notice on the packaging uh, for Vetsilin is that now it'll say on there that the insulin needs to be shaken. And that's sort of a strange concept for us. Uh, we've always told owners and veterinarians, you know, don't shake it. Uh, insulin needs to be handled uh, very carefully. But this product, because of its mechanism of action and how it's manufactured, it does need to be shaken well in order to get dispersal of the insulin throughout the bottle. Um, so that'll be a new concept, and that'll be emphasized uh, on the package insert from Merck. The other things about the Lenti insulins is that, you know, I think now that they're back on the market and Vetsilin is here, for newly diagnosed dogs, it's going to be our insulin of choice to start with initial management. And then if we don't get good glycemic control for whatever reason, then we're going to move on to other types of insulins. The other insulins that we're really looking at in dogs, and there's two recent studies that have come out, both involve the use of basal insulin, such as Glargine and Detamir. And it, it looks like, based on the publications and what we've experienced, that if we're having problems with glycemic control with a lenti-type insulin, we're probably going to switch to insulin detamir. The advantage of this type of a basal insulin is that it allows for more uniform absorption um, because it's uh, more slowly absorbed from subcutaneous sites. And in addition, detamir binds to proteins in the blood, so it tends to act more as a slow release. The one thing to really remember about Datamir insulins, though, is that they're very, very potent insulins. So whereas we talk about using a half a unit per kilogram twice a day when we're talking about Lenti insulins, we're really talking about 0.1 units per kilogram twice a day when you're switching to Datamir. The other type of insulin that we'll use uh, fairly commonly in dogs are the NPH class of insulins. Uh, these are intermediate acting insulins like Lenti but they don't have the bimodal onset of action. So with NPH insulins, what we see is a, usually a peak onset of action about four to six hours post-administration and hopefully lasting anywhere from eight to 12. So I think with the return of Vetsilin, we're going to be looking at that's going to be our go-to insulin. With poor glycemic control, we can be looking at intermediate acting insulins such as NPH or more potent basal insulins such as Detamir.